I think that one could not understand anything in Deleuze's argumentation on the subject of stupidity, which implies thinking as human freedom in its relation to individuation, as a phenomenon of individuation, Vereinzelung, which is determined on the ground, on the background of the ground, one would understand nothing of this argumentation if one could not reconstitute the whole of Schelling's discourse on freedom and human evil, and notably what Schelling called the ground, the originary ground, Urbund, which is also a non-ground, a groundless ground, Ungrund, the Urbund as Ungrund. In a moment, I'm going to quote some lines by Schelling that Deleuze doesn't quote, but which are visibly the source of his argumentation here. And, as he, and he refers to Schelling in a footnote without quoting him. When Deleuze says that stupidity is, I quote, possible by virtue of the link between thought and individuation, unquote, he distinguishes what is proper to man, stupidity as proper to man. Or again, when he says, I quote, individuation as such, as it operates be beneath all forms, is inseparable from a pure ground that it brings, that it brings to the surface and trails with it. It is difficult to describe this ground or the terror and attraction it excites. Turning over the ground is the most dangerous occupation, but also the most tempting the stupefied moments of an obtuse will. For this ground, along with the individual, rises to the surface, yet assumes neither form nor figure. It is there, staring at us, but without eyes. The individual distinguishes itself from it, but it does not distinguish itself, continu continuing rather to grow habit with that which divorces itself from it. It is the indeterminate, but the indeterminate insofar as it continues to embrace determination as the ground does the shoe, as the ground does the shoe. It continues to embrace determination as the ground does the shoe. Comme le sol, toute la chaussure. Comme le fond, toute la chaussure. So, the animal cannot be bad. That's why Deleuze had written previously, stupidity is not animality, it is. Um, the animal, stupidity, bêtise n'est pas animalité. The animal is protected by a specific form which prevents it from being stupid, bad. In other words, the animal cannot be bad, stupid because it is not free, it has no will, and its individuation, which, give, which, gives it, it, which gives it shape of form, does not appear on the background of a ground, which is freedom itself. Freedom as Urgrund and, and Ungrund. Just after the passage of individuation, I mentioned a moment ago, Deleuze writes, animals I quote, animals are in a sense forewarned against this ground protected by their explicit forms. Animals are in a sense forewarned against this ground protected by their explicit form. That page 152, different interpretation. That's why they cannot be bad. But one cannot deny that the phrasing here, the Rosus phrasing, is very vague and empirical. The expression, en quelque sorte, in a sense, animals are in a sense for war against this ground. Les animaux, en quelque sorte, prémunis contre ce fond par la forme des explicit. Animals are in a sense for war against this ground by their explicit forms. This phrasing, <coughs> this phrasing introduces something vague, out of focus as to the explicitness of a form. At what moment is a form, in a sense, explicit? And finally, what are the forms Deleuze has in mind 
here, when he designates in such a general and indeterminable fashion the animals. Who are the animals? Who are the animals? Who are the animals? Couldn't we say that man also has explicit forms that fall on him, in a sense, against the ground, that is, against stupidity? The passage by Schelling concerning the ground that I wanted to quote, and whose principle, it seems to me, supports or sustains the whole the legend discourse here, can be found in his philosophical research on the essence of nature of human liberty. Schilling is explaining and trying to justify his distinction between being, Wesen, as ground, Grund, and being as existing, existence. So, distinction between Wesen as Grund and Wesen as existence. Discussing this problem, Schelling states that there should be, there should necessarily be a being, Wesen, prior to any ground or any existence. Uh, and thus, in general, prior to any opposition, any duality, he says, I quote, how could we call this anything other, we can be as Anders nennen, anything other than originary ground, then as that then ungrund, other filmer ungrund, other filmer ungrund. How could we call this anything other than originary ground, ungrund, or better, non-ground, ungrund, or groundless ground, ground. And he goes on, since it precedes all oppositions, that is for Allen Gegessen setzen for, for her gate, since it precedes all opposition, all oppositions, these oppositions cannot be discerned nor present <coughs> in other way in themselves. It cannot be thus characterized as identity, but only as absolute indifference as to the principle, as to principle, the absolute indifference. So, as, uh, as can daher nicht as the identität, as can nur as the absolute, absolute indifference by the Bezeichnung werden. Within this logic, which is Schellingian as well as the legend, man takes shape, is determined in his form, on this background of the ground, by keeping with it a relation, a free relation. That's his freedom, a relation to the groundless ground, the Urbund as Ungrund, which would be denied to animals, to animals who are nevertheless, in a sense, forewarned against, prémuni, the uh, de prémuni, forewarned, contre ce form, ce form par la forme explicite, forewarned against this ground by their explicit forms. So we should read Schelling again, and Heidegger on Schelling, in particular what Schelling says on this human sickness that stupidity, Blödsinn, is. Blödsinn is at the center of the remarkable book by my friend here, Avital Ronald, Stupidity. Um, <coughs> stupidity, Betty, you say exactly the same thing. You know the book. Now, to come back to Deleuze, only this experience of freedom that Betis is, as human freedom, only this freedom that has a relation to the ground as ground can account for the fact that only, not only is Betis foreign to animals, but it may be linked to the three motives I indicated a moment ago, namely sovereignty, cruelty, and thus of evil, disease or sickness, as Schilling would say, sickness, and then thought, thinking. 